Welcome to today's webinar program, Case Study Presentation, AP Process Innovation and ERP Integration, brought to you by the Accounts Payable Network and Perceptive Software. My name is Karen. I'll be your conference moderator for today's program. During today's 60-minute program, you will be in a listen-only mode. Should you have a question at any time during today's call, please submit your question using the chat function within the webinar interface. If you should have any technical difficulties, please press star zero on your telephone keypad and an operator will assist you. Please remember that it is a violation of copyright laws to record the conference. Attendees seeking CPE credit for this webinar, please pay careful attention to the screen. We will be displaying five special codes. Please type these codes into the entry field of the pop-up messages. You will need to type all five codes to qualify for CPE credit. If you are APM or APS certified through the IOMA TAPN AP certification program, then you require CEUs. If you require the CEU credit, you will not need the codes. And today we have with us two incredible presenters. Tara Davis, and Carrie Bickford. And with that, I'll hand it over to Carrie. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Carrie Bickford, and I'm an account executive with Perceptive Software. I've worked with our organization for a little over six years and have the pleasure of working with one of our, um, or with our customer presenter today, Tara Davis. Tara Davis is the Accounts Payable Team Lead that is supporting daily tasks and projects at Hillrom. She supports the credit card program, expense report processing, and invoice processing. She has been in the Accounts Payable Department at Hillrom for more than 17 years, and her formal education is from City Cincinnati State and Technical College into, in accounting. And today she's going to share Hillrom's experience um, with with JDE Integration and their AP Automation Solution. So with that, let me introduce Tara Davis. Thank you, Carrie. Um, good morning, everyone. I'll go through um, the agenda and then continue into the presentation. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about Hillrom, um, our life before automation. Um, a look at the Hillrom solution that we have created through Perceptive Software, the benefits of our automation, the lessons we learned, future plans that we have for continuing with um, future integration of Perceptive Software, and then Carrie will give you a little bit about Perceptive Software, and then we'll go through any questions. Hillrom is a worldwide manufacturer of medical um, technologies. We have patient support systems, patient mobility systems, and handling solutions. Um, we do medical rentals, and we have recently acquired a company that handles um, surgical products. So we offer a wide variety of products um, that you find in the hospital settings. This first slide here I wanted to show everyone is just um, what we have done so far with um, implementing this solution. We had originally had 24 filing cabinets in our hallway holding about a year and a half worth of invoices. Uh, of course, you can tell how cluttered the hallway looks. And then um, just actually within a week after implementing, we were no longer filing anything, so we were able to cut those cabinets already in half. By the end of 2013, all of our documents that were um, in these filing cabinets will be out in our archives. We'll have a one clean hallway, and um, we will never have a need to go back to those filing cabinets again, thankfully. Here at Hillrom, we have um, a staff of about five employees who process invoices on a full-time basis, one employee who um, primarily does just payments and credit cards, then I'm the system administrator for the um, software, so I do any upkeep or um, help people with questions with the software and how to go about looking things up or processing invoices through. We do have two others in the department, but they are mostly um, dealing with like the 1099 reporting, compliance, and expense reports. 
we process roughly 15,000 invoices per month. Of those invoices, 5,000 of those are from evaluated receipt settlement suppliers. Basically, we don't receive an invoice from them. We just pay upon the receipt that gets entered into our system. The other 10,000 um, invoices are processed by my team of the five employees, um, and we are using now the perceptive capture and content and process. Um, the ERP system that we currently use is JD Edwards 9.0, and then with that, we are using the web services through JD Edwards that um, creates the SOA interface that downloads our invoices from the perceptive software into JD Edwards without anyone having to go into our ERP system and manually enter those. Um, it has really sped up our process. This is our old process. Um, basically, we would get about a bucket or two of mail at least a day. Mondays were 10 times worse because we had all of our weekend mail, so we'd get up to four buckets um, of invoices that we would manually open and then sort alphabetically by the processor. We'd distribute those into their bin, individual bins, and then once the processor came to pick up their work for the day, they would then have to sort again into whether it was a non-PO invoice, expense PO, any discount vendors we pulled out separately so we can make sure we got those processed on time, and then any manufacturing POs. Um, a lot of our manufacturing POs, because we had to wait on receipts and different things, and most of those were at net 30 days, so we would kind of hold those off to the side. Um, Upon processing, when they went to process their invoices, they would have to manually document the voucher number and the batch number from J.D. Edwards onto each individual um, invoice. And then from there, they would file those into a batch and then have to manually walk to the filing cabinets to file away during the day. Um, of course, you've seen how many cabinets we had, and then if they um, were out of sorts, it was really hard to go back and find them later. So anytime we had to look for those, we were definitely crossing our fingers and hoping that they were not misfiled or that someone hadn't taken one out and never bothered to put it back or put it back in the wrong spot. We figured that um, our invoices, on an average processing time, probably took about four minutes to enter all the information into J.D. Edwards manually and process the invoice. That's if we didn't have any complications. Um, many times, as you know, there's not receipts in the system, so we'd have to put that one to the side, get out, get back in a new batch. And um, non-PO invoices, if they weren't properly approved, which we had a very manual um, approval process. So um, it just was time consuming to do those, but the actual input into the system we figured took about four minutes per invoice. Today, um, our accounts payable process, since it's been automated, um, we basically get the invoices. We have tried to convert most of our invoices over to emails. We probably are getting about half of our invoices via email, um, in which Perceptive Software pulls those into our system automatically, so we are not having to touch those and manually put those into our system. Um, any invoices that we do still get by hard copy, the only sorting we have to do with those is basically multiple page invoices and single page invoices because we want to make sure that all the multiple pages stay together for the invoice. So there's two different capture profiles for us to get those into our system. These invoices, once they go through the perceptive capture piece, they are routed into one processor queue. So there is only one queue for our group to have to review all invoices that come into that queue. That way they're able to um, help each other out if they're on vacation. And then we just use filters for those processors because we do actually process, each processor has a certain letter of the alphabet that they process invoices for. So those, they are able to do filters within Perceptive software to be able to pull only their invoices. But if someone's on vacation, all they have to do is go to the unfiltered view, and then they're able to help either, each other out. Um, and if invoices have not been received into our system yet, 
um, they are sent to a holding queue. Basically, our manufacturing POs, if they come in and they have been received, they will go through the system without our processors having to touch them. But if they have not been received, they actually go into a holding queue, and the system automatically looks into that queue periodically to see if they've been received. So then our processors still don't have to sit, spend their time looking up each day to see if this invoice had been received or not. The data that's extracted um, off of our invoices and held in an e-form with the Perceptive software is then imported into JD Edwards automatically for us. So there's no man manual entry on our part. It's automatically downloaded into JD Edwards and creates the vouchers for us. Then the system also communicates back and puts our document number back into Perceptive software. And then once the invoice is paid, it actually puts that invoice or the payment number and payment date on the um, invoice itself so that when someone's researching later, they can see all that information. Um, one of the biggest benefits um, that we've noticed is the fact that we don't have to go pull things out of the filing cabinet and other areas in our company that are not located because we are um, worldwide, so we even have um, our other locations being able to lo look up their invoices through the web service or the web now product. Um, it's reduced a lot of phone calls on our part, and it's reduced us having to walk to the filing cabinet. We've also implemented a hyperlink um, in JD Edwards for pulling up invoices. So in about five different screens within G JD Edwards where our invoice number appears, you're able to click on that hyperlink and actually view your invoice directly from our ERP system. So that helps out our analysts and those folks that are looking up and checking people's accounts on a daily basis. If they need more detail, they just can just click on that link to pull up the information. Um, our average processing time with manufacturing POs has probably been reduced to basically almost nothing. Um, there are a few invoices that we still receive where we have multiple POs on an invoice. So that does not flow through the system. We have to pull those out a little bit separately. But it's just a matter of working with our vendors to get them to put the information on how we need it. Um, the average processing time for non-PO invoices is about one minute, maybe two minutes. Um, it's definitely been cut in half because of the Perceptive Capture software. It pulls all that header information off of the invoice for us and populates it into that e-form. So the, for non-POs, the only thing we're really having to do is account code or forward it on to um, someone for approval. And then they actually do the account coding for us. Um, with the intelligent capture, there was some change management that we had to do on both the supplier side and on our side. Um, many of our suppliers were not sending um, the information to us on our invoices in the format in which we needed it. So we had to work with our sub suppliers to get them to format, put it in the, our format so that the intelligent capture could just pull the information off for us. So our POs are in a three-segmented PO stage, and they would most likely just put that first piece of the PO on it for us. So when um, Perceptive Capture looked at that invoice, it did not see the PO number, so then would classify that invoice as a non-PO, which is just because our vendors didn't supply it correctly to us. Um, we've been able to contact many of our suppliers and get that formatting changed, and now the invoices come through um, without a problem. There was also... Um, data integrity in our system as far as we did not always have the most up-to-date information and not always the information that matched the address on the supplier invoice. Um, we have went through many steps and through the intelligent capture, it actually helps us with notif or realizing which vendors are the ones that were not updated in our system correctly and helped us get a lot of the address information correct. So with the Perceptive Intelligent Capture, there is what's called straight through processing. Basically, you can put an invoice in, it goes straight through their system, there's no interaction with um, a processor at all until it gets into the processor queue after it's extracted everything off. The straight through 
processing information is as good as the information on the invoice. So if you get your vendors to send you clean information and your system is up to date with that information, a great majority of your invoices can go through in a straight through processing. Um, we do receive multiple types of inbound invoices. Um, we definitely receive single page invoices, multiple page invoices. All of those can go through the system. There's different ways to capture those in um, if we have to scan them in or even if we get them in an electronic format. Some vendors send them as one attachment per invoice. And that is our preferred method because if they are sending them one attachment per invoice, Perceptive Capture can capture that directly and we don't have to intervene and put it into the system. We have some vendors that are unable to do that and they send all of their invoices at, for one day in one PDF file. If they do that, we still have the ability to get it into it electronically and not have to print it off and scan it in. So it's really a very versatile system as far as um, ease of getting invoices into the system. We do receive invoices um, via PDF, TIFF, um, Excel format. We receive some Word formats and even a few invoices that we receive in a text format, and their system is able to pick up all of those and get them into the system for us. Um, our workflow design, um, which is the, all the pre-setup that we did to how we wanted our um, work to flow through our process, and um, we looked at our as-is process, how we were currently doing invoices manually, and then we looked at how we would want to do them and how to improve the system. And then after even improving that, we looked at it again and fact ask ourselves if there was any way that we could automate or simplify. Um, because anything that you can automate or simplify just makes it easier when you go to design your workflow. Um, the approval authorization was one of our most manual steps probably in the process. Um, we would get a form from the employee. They had to manually give it to their supervisor or email it to their supervisor. Then they would have to print it, sign off on it, and then send it back in to us. We would then upload all that information into an Excel spreadsheet, and then we would have to manually look at that spreadsheet every time we processed an invoice. It was very manual, and um, sometimes it allowed for um, us not to be compliant with our SOX regulations because people would think that they knew this person had so much approval and would already go ahead and let it go through without actually checking. So with our new automated process, with the e-form, we have an electronic e-form that they actually fill out. And most of that information is pulled directly from our um, HR system, so they don't even have to fill it in and give us wrong information. They just have to know their employee number. It lets them know how much they're pre-authorized to approve. If they need more than that, they can put it, um, in the amount that they need to be able to approve. Then it routes automatically to their supervisor. If there's any exceptions, um, it does have to get approved by our controller, but then it is also automatically um, routed to our controller. And then once it comes back already approved, then they are ready to authorize. We don't, really, we don't have to look at the form again um, to do anything with it or put it on an Excel spreadsheet. It's automatically in the system for us. Um, we then looked at the invoice process. So when it comes into the system, you know, which queue it needs to go into, under which circumstances, and then from there, which routes out of that queue it needs to take. For um, PO invoices, of course, they sometimes take a different route than non-PO invoices because our non-PO invoices need approved. Our PO invoices may need to wait for that receipt to be created. Um, we also set up error processing queues. The error processing queues were set up basically at each step of the process where there could be um, invalid information so that if something goes into those error queues, we know what the problem is and we're able to fix it quickly. We also had to think about security and access. Who will need access to be able to look up invoices, to process invoices, and just how much control in each of those queues they need. So it's really um, easy to give access or deny access for each step of the process. 
Um, our perceptive software consultant was very critical to our solution design. They were able to help us simplify things even further than how we had envisioned it um, through other through other implementations that they have done, they are able to um, sometimes help you so simplify things. They have a great knowledge of the product. Um, they were any, they were always helpful on trying to find if we needed certain controls put in place to help us automate those so that we didn't have to have manual controls. Then with them being here on site, we were during the implementation piece of it, we were able to um, make quick changes. Um, if something wasn't working the way we wanted it to work, even as far as um, there was certain grayed out pieces of our of our form that weren't very visible because it was too grayed out, so they were able to brighten those things up and just make little things that helped us process quicker. This is our current workflow design. Um, I'm very pleased with our workflow design. It's very simplified. Um, it's not cluttered like a lot of workflows I've seen in the past. Um, the top blue portion of the invoice processing workflow is really just the routing around of an invoice until it gets all of the information that it needs, whether it needs approval or whether it needs um, the receipt. It just workflows around those pieces until it's complete. Then down in the yellow and orange sections and even into the green, those are the sections that are really automated and it's talking back and forth with our system. It's creating um, the actual voucher in our system and then it, like I said before, it pulls back the voucher number into um, the Perceptive Software eForm, and it also pulls back the check information. So when our users are looking things up, they only have to go to this one system to find everything that they need. Where before, with our ear, looking at it in our ERP system, we sometimes had to go to multiple different um, screens in order to get all the information we needed. The red area um, of our workflow is all of the error cues. It seems like a lot of error cues, but like I said, it breaks it down into each step of the process where there could be a problem. Um, really, in the end, very few of these error cues have anything in them throughout the day, but if something were to um, stop working, if something went down, we were and we'd see certain things in these error cues, we're able to fix them quickly and get it back up and running quickly. Um, I did want to point out the piece in the far left at the bottom that says manual linking process. This is only for um, those invoices in which we cannot flow through this workflow design. And those are our consolidated invoices where we're sending all of our invoices in one big consolidated bill. So we download those as a spreadsheet. And then also the ones that we still have vendors sending us multiple POs on one invoice, those have to be manually linked after the fact um, or actually as we are processing them in our ERP system. But we have very few that go through that process. Um, our actual processors only have about six of these queues that they have to review. So it's really not um, real overwhelming for them. There's just six queues, and in those queues they know it's their main processor review queue, the AP rejected queue if one of our approvers rejected something to them. Then they have an error queue, which um, we put all of their um, ones that have aired out for one reason or another if they didn't give us all the information that we needed. It goes into their error queue. So they have very few queues that they actually have to monitor. And then I actually monitor the rest of them, which are more system-generated queues, just to make sure things are flowing through correctly. Um, the eForms and integration with our system. The one big plus to the system is the eForms. It's able to hold all of the information off of the invoice and have it in one location. Then we're able to approve directly from that form and um, just help simplify the process. We created two eForms um, for our process. One was our invoice eForm, which includes our non-PO invoices, two-way match, three-way match, our debit memos and our credits are all in one form. You just select um, up in the upper right-hand corner between the forms because the non-PO form and the PO form look just slightly different based on the information that we need. 
The other one was the approval authorization e-form, which is the standalone e-form that they um, send through to get authorization to approve invoices. Um, our e-forms are modeled after our JDE voucher screens. We decided to do this, one, to make it an easier learning curve for our processors. With the screens looking similar, they knew where to look, and it made it quick for them in processing the invoices through. It also helped us ensure that we were capturing all the pertinent information uh, that we needed for our interface. Um, we also incorporated shading and optional information fields, which the shaded fields were fields that were pulled in from our ERP system, but like the um, supplier address and um, supplier terms, they were all pulled in, and they're kind of grayed out. And but that's just so we can validate that we've got the correct vendor for the correct invoice. We we also had the notes field. Um, which was something we kind of added later, but it's a very beneficial area where we can communicate back and forth between the processors and our approvers. Um, the integration with um, the software and our ERP system has really helped us out a lot. Um, the talking back and forth, it it checks at many different stages of the process to make sure the information that's in there is valid. It double checks our ERP system to make sure that the account coding is correct that we put in there, or, in it, or it errors out in one of our error queues if it's not. Um, it also allows us to upload the information directly into JD Edwards. That way we don't have to do any manually, manual entering of the invoices. Um, there was a few custom views that we had to create in JD Edwards, and that's just so the lookup could go back to one screen interface and the script only had to be wrote to that one interface or to that one screen to look up all the information. That screen's never seen by any of our users, but it did help in um, implementing the integration between the two systems. Um, the integration of the eForms with JD Edwards, um, the testing in this was really critical. Um, it was the first time we had really used the SOA interface, which is a JD Edwards solution to implement, to downloading the information into our system electronically on a real-time capture. Um, we had to make sure that the fields that we had pulled off were the fields we needed for that interface, and that all of them got populated correctly so that it interfaced quickly. Um, this also eliminates a lot of the possible errors so that the errors are not found when it gets to the ERP system. It's much easier for the kickouts to be in the, in the capture piece of the software instead of in the ERP system in order to make corrections. This is a sample of our eForm. Um, if you look at this form, you'll see that the top gray area is um, basically all the header information that you would pull off of the invoice. So the capture piece, intelligent capture piece, is actually pulling all of this information off of our invoices for us. So no one is having to key any of that. Now if there's anything that we notice that we need to change, we are able to make changes to it before we send it out for approval or um, send it on to look for the receipts. Down in the bottom section, this is much how our JDE screens look. Um, it pulls in the PO line item information from our ERP system and is able to match it up with the line item information off of the invoice in order to process it through without someone having to manually um, click on the line items that we need to use for that invoice. Down at the very bottom is where our approvers can approve. All they have to do is click the Approve button, and it actually populates their user ID and the date in which they approved it. Um, up in the upper right-hand corner is actually where you can select between the forms. Sometimes the vendors will put a PO on the invoice, because, it, but the invoice is really just for freight, but it was referencing the PO that these um, parts were shipped on. So it will pull in that PO information, and all you have to do is just select um, from that drop-down the non-PO form, and then it will change over. All that header information will stay, so all you have to really do is account code the invoice and send it on.
This is our um, invoice lookup within WebNow. Um, our invoice, or I'm sorry, within JD Edwards. This is our JD Edwards screen and where we look up invoices um, to see if they've been entered into the system. Once we see that, um, we can we don't have to go back to the filing cabinets and pull any paper files, and we no longer have to pull the invoices for someone. So if they're in this screen looking for invoices paid to this vendor, all they have to do is um, click on the link. So on this screen you will see that underneath the invoice number, um, there, it's underlined, and it, th there's a hyperlink created for each invoice um, in our JD Edwards screen. So th all you have to do is click on that um, JD Edwards hyperlink, and then that takes you over to the WebNow login screen. Then all our users have to do is enter their um, system login information, and it is our, the system generated um, login that they use for their main system to get in each day. So they just enter that in and hit connect, and that automatically pulls up the invoice and the e-form for them to view. This has really eliminated, as I've said several times, a lot of phone calls and um, a lot of interaction with the areas because they can pull their information. They love it because they don't have to wait on us to get back with them. Um, in this information you see to the left the actual invoice image. You see to the right the actual um, e-form that we have created. You can scroll down on the e-form and see that whether it's been approved or not. And then there's also a tab at the bottom that says Properties. That pulls off all the document properties that we want to search upon, and it also includes our payment number and payment date information. So the user just has to go to this one screen to see everything they need to know about the invoice. The next piece of information is the visibility reporting. This is the reporting within um, the Perceptive Capture software, and this is reporting just based on what the system is able to pull off of the invoice and extract automatically for us. It gives you um, a lot of visibility to what's being captured and what is not being captured off of certain invoices. And sometimes that's just the clarity of the invoice that you're receiving. So if you receive fax copies of invoices and it's really smudged up or they don't have very clear invoices, they're using dot matrix printers. Some of those may not come through and pull everything off as well as you would like just because of the clarity of the invoice. So the more invoices that you can get electronically will help improve um, what's coming through the system and getting captured correctly. Um, in these charts, the one nice thing about these reports is that you can drill down um, in those buckets. So if you want to look at the invoices, you can drill down to see down to the level of what piece of the information is not being pulled off accurately for certain vendors. Okay. On this next report, this report gets more down to um, the analyzing of the fields and what the issues are with the OCR process. And like I said, a lot of that really depends on the clarity of the invoice that you're receiving. Um, it shows you to the left-hand side the field. Those are the fields that we've opted to pull off um, of the invoice and are populating onto our e-form. It tells you for the period of time that you're pulling the number of documents that were processed through, and then the percentage of those fields that was pulled off correctly. Um, and again, that is due to um, how the vendor sends it to you. So if it's not pulling a PO number off, it could be that the vendor is not sending the PO in the correct format for your system. And then you can also drill down on that to get more information to actually see the exact vendor that's causing the problems for you to be able to correct. And once you get those corrected, then you'll start seeing them come through um, correct in all the fields. The benefits. There was many benefits to going um, electronic and to use the whole intelligent capture piece of the software. Um, the approval process is automated, so there's no longer manually checking 
our approval limits and having invoices go through that don't get approved correctly. Um, for one day, of course, the biggest benefit is no more filing cabinets. Um, we um, enjoy seeing the area getting a little cleaner. The invoice lookup, the embedded link um, to WebNow within the JDE screens um, has been a great time savings, not only to us, but everyone in the company who needs to research invoices. Um, the error queues. The error queues was a benefit just because it helps um, to quickly resolve the issues. If you need to go into a certain error queue, you know what your problems are going to be and how to get them fixed quickly. Um, the automated matching is um, also a great time savings because for a lot of the manufacturing POs, our employees never have to look at those invoices or only have to look at them once. So if there's um, freight on an invoice, it will kick out to them because they have to account code that freight line item because we don't generally put the freight on the PO itself. If we put freight lines on the POs, then they would not have to look at a lot of the invoices. Um, the faster processing cycles and the increased discounts, because we're getting our invoices into the system almost the day that the vendor sends them to us or the next day, depending on if they need approvals and stuff like that, we are getting invoices processed quicker. Um, it helps our days payable outstanding and the visibili visibility to that. We're able to see things um, the accrual that we have to do at the end of the month, we're able to see invoices are, that are still sitting out there that would not have normally got recorded um, because they were sitting on someone's desk. They're sitting in our electronic queues in which we have visibility to now. Also, the employee workload visibility. Um, you can see who's processed what invoices through which queues. Um, you can see how long it sat in a queue, or you can see the overall overall processing time it took from that invoice to get into our system until the time that it has paid. Um, it's reduced the total number of invoices that we have to manually process. Like I said before, our consolidated invoices and those um, vendors still sending multiple POs on one invoice um, are about the only invoices that we're having to manually process through our system now. These are some more before and after photos of our area. The before, you can see lots of um, bins for their mail. Each way that they used to sort it, if they had problems or the non-POs, the discounts, you see unopened mail in the cube um, that will sit there until they had time to open it, where today that's getting opened um, as soon as it gets here and scanned in as soon as it gets here. So it's really helped um, clean up the cubes. And you can see afterwards, um, probably within about a week afterwards, after they've cleaned up all the problems on their desk and got everything into the system, we've seen much cleaner cubes and um, less clutter. This is probably my favorite slide, um, showing where we opened our mail, where we sorted the mail, and all of this has been eliminated. All this clutter is no longer in our area. So that's been a lot nicer. We actually open, um, we have a scan station, and in that area we're able to open the mail, scan it, and get it out of that cube right away so we never see the clutter. Um, lessons that we learned. Um, the on-site support was very beneficial during our testing phase. It allowed us to make a lot of um, changes quickly. If we thought we wanted something some way and it just didn't work the way we had thought it would, we were able to make the ch changes right then and there with um, our on-site support. We did not um, have a consultant with us at Go Live, but um, in our case it wasn't necessary because of all the testing we did with them when they were on-site developing the software. So we were able to just have daily calls with them for any little things that we seen that we didn't think was working the way we wanted it to work or even the improving of the quality of the um, text that was in the grayed out areas. The syncing the test invoices with your test data, for us we had an issue where our test system was being updated and we were not able to get current information into that test data 
our test system. So it was hard for us to test because we had to go back to old invoices and pull them out of our filing cabinets and scan them in in order to test the system through. So that would be one of the things that you'd want to make sure that you have um, up-to-date testing information to help with your um, process. You really want to focus on your workflow um, and process designs. Make sure you have as much automated as you possibly can, the cleanest workflow you possibly can, and for us it was the electronic approval process and authorization e-form just to help simplify and check for us to, so that we didn't have to manually do all of that. The reporting, we did this as a, a post-implementation exercise. We didn't spend a lot of time with the reporting until um, after we were into processing invoices, probably for a few weeks to a month even, that before we got into looking at a lot of the reporting. But in that reporting, since we've started using it, has really allowed us to see a lot of things, um, see changes we need to make in the process flow, um, we could see where things were hanging up a lot of times, and we were able to work through getting those out of our main processor queue a lot quicker. So the reporting was um, very nice. These are future enhancements. Um, once you start imaging something, um, you continue to find other things that you want to have imaged and workflowed to people because it just makes it so much easier to pull up, to get copies of it to someone, um, and you can electronically route it to them versus having to find them at their desk and get them to sign things. Our future enhancements are um, the electronic submission of our non-invoice payment request. Um, this is our check request form, basically, or payment request form for like seminar fees and things that you don't get invoices for. We have a form, a paper form today that we have them fill out. We're hoping to um, create an e-form in the future so that they can electronically submit it. That will help us get the vendor information populated from our ERP system for us, and also require them to fill in the fields that we need them to fill in in order to process the request for them. The payment register and approval um, automation of those payment registers, we require an additional um, approval on payments over a certain amount of money. So we were having to print out that payment register, which um, two or three times a week our payment registers that we create are at least 80 pages or greater because it shows all the detail of our invoices on that. We'd have to print that out, take it over to someone to manually approve. We now um, print that into ImageNow, and we have reduced a lot of paper that was getting printed and then also eased the approval process. The ACH remittances are our electronic remittances that go out to the supplier. We do get a PDF file that contains all of our remittances, but it's kind of cumbersome to go back into and um, find the one you need if someone says that they did not receive theirs. We would like these remittances to be printed into the perceptive content and actually attached to um, the payment information so that we can pull this up quickly and if we need to email it to them, email it directly from that system. The other piece that um, our approvers would love to see is the mobile application for approvals. Um, right now they are not able to approve from their mobile devices, but that would greatly um, speed up our approval process, I believe. And this is um, all I have. Let me turn it back over to Carrie for any final remarks. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much, Tara. You all have a really great solution, and we really appreciate you taking the time to share it with everyone today. Um, really quickly, before we kick it over to some Q&A questions, I want to take just a minute or two to tell um, everyone on the line who may not be familiar with our organization who Perceptive Software is and what we are all about. Um, we were founded in 1995 here in Kansas City, and we develop business process and content management software and solutions. And we are currently one of the top 10 largest providers in the world with over $100 million worth of software licenses sold in just the past three and a half years. In the summer of 2010, we were acquired by Lexmark International, 
And really what that has done for our organization is really just provided us with the stability as well as the capital to continue to grow and improve our solutions as well as really roll out worldwide 